Let there be music in our hearts. Let there be music in our hearts today, beloved. For have we not cause for rejoicing? I bring to you, beloved ones, another cause for rejoicing. And it is that an individual, unknown to you yet, who has had connection with this activity, has on this day ascended from the temple of Luxor. And so it is true, beloved, that each one of you rises a little bit when one of your members takes that ascension, that glorious and grand step into the octaves of light, never more to be tainted again by the earthly atmosphere. So is the ritual of ascension welcomed when it is taken at the right time for everyone. Please be seated then. I come to you to discuss with you today the future of this organization. The future lies in your hearts and your hands. This dispensation comes following the 33rd anniversary last year of the Summit Lighthouse. Building upon that, you have heard sponsors and very determined masters ready to help. Now I expect you to defeat the negatives, whether in your astrological chart or in your karma, or in your human habit patterns. Defeat them. Carve up your day in a new chart and a new map and see what you can do that you have not done before. See how you can organize, how you can accelerate, and how you can appreciate remembering when you were, quote, out there and had nowhere to turn when you knew that there was something, a message, a light, even a church or a movement or a place where you could truly drink from the waters of everlasting life. Do not be like the ones who surveyed the scene of the Buddha and the Bodhisattvas, jumped over the wall and never came back to tell the great, great story of the path, the path to union with God. I remember my own quest in many lifetimes and partial knowledge. You remember also when you gave your very best, but there was no dispensation, not even an intercession of violet flame to prevent your assassination, your untimely death, or simply your non-fulfillment, and you went to rest in certain planes of the spirit, weary from that lifetime, and yet so yearning for the age that was to come, the age when all these things might be put together for you, because it would be the age of the coming of the Divine Mother and the coming of the World Mother once again. Now that you have the precious configuration, you know the calculus of this embodiment and of the path. All you need to do is fill in the blanks. 
like those paintings that are numbered that come in a set and provide you all the colors. Once you have filled them in, the picture is complete. Well, your life is as almost as easy as that, beloved ones. Though it is hard and seems hard, it must be allowed to be hard by the lords of karma. For if you do not appreciate the weight and the burden that you have put upon life by having now to deal and wrestle with it, what kind of a prize would it be? Some kind of a make-believe TV talk show? You give the right answer and you go up three notches. Well, beloved ones, the path has been hard won. It may not have been so hard to descend, beloved ones, but from our perspective, it was very hard when we hit bottom. And many of us did, and so we began our climb. And it is a wonderful thing and wonder of wonders to our friends as well as our enemies that we have made it to the ascended state. Be not concerned, beloved ones. There is hardly an ascended one in heaven, nameless or well known to you, who does not continue to be criticized by those in embodiment who knew that one or who are aware of that one as a historical figure. You simply cannot please the human consciousness and therefore do not try. Do not go down therefore and roll with your little piglets in the mud and enjoy yourselves at that level but rise to the level of your godhood, stay there and draw all men and women and children of the light who are destined to rise in this age. They are not all destined to rise, therefore when they reject the light, do not be dismayed or saddened or depressed. Know that there is a harvest and the wise pickers go out and they pick the ripe fruit, and they leave the rest to ripen. Yes, beloved, pick the ripe fruit, that which is ripe and ready to fall from the tree. That is the one who will go forward, whom you may touch. Blessed hearts, make yourself available to light bearers by the simple process of making yourself totally unavailable to those who are servants of the left-handed path. No matter what excuse may, you may conjure up that you owe them something or this is a lesson or this is needful to resolve your psychology. Let them pass you by with disdain as they always do. Keep on walking toward the sun and you will meet the inhabitants of the sun. You will meet the bodhisattvas. Be content to be alone in the honor of God until you are together with those who embody that honor. If you do not make this your lifetime policy, you will waste your life fritter away your energies, spend the precious substance of your chakras, of your glands, and all that God has deposited in you, and not have the wherewithal to take flight when you must move against the gravity, the downward pull of the entire mass consciousness of the planet in order to make your ascension as that one who ascended today so did. Do not be concerned that you pull against the world, for when you do, know that legions of angels are pulling with you, pulling you up. And when the mass consciousness can no longer bear the fragrance of the lilies that surround you, they let go, and the light bearers hitch themselves to your wagon, and you find that God is pulling, legions of Surya are pulling, and you are pulling an entire race and root race of people toward the sun simply by the set of your jaw, the twinkle in the eye, the God determination, and the absolute certainty of self-knowledge that you are the winner 
You know who you are. You know where you are going. And the smart people and the spiritual people will know it too. And they will follow. And that is all that counts in this world. Why I tell you, beloved, in my time and in all of my embodiments, I have known the misunderstanding of millions. Yet I cherish the precious friendships, the friendships I count among you, as we have been together for so many lifetimes, the bonding of our hearts, and through that bonding, the springing forth of a new bonding to the Lord Christ and the Lord Buddha. Yes, beloved, for every misunderstanding, every shunning, every ignoring of your life or mine, there has the been the reward of the bringing together of those who are one. This is like a confraternity of the brothers and sisters of Islam or of Judaism, or of this or that Masonic order, the Knights Templar, and so on. It is like the bonding together of all who have ever been the Gnostics or the mystics of their own faith. Is it not a wondrous thing to find in a lifetime that where one could count the true friends on a couple of hands or less, now one counts one's friends in the millions of ascended and unascended devotees of the light. Is this not a grand cause for rejoicing in the mystical body of God? Yes. I teach you one lesson today. And it is the projection upon you and into you of the fallen ones who demand, you must please us until we approve of you. You must do our bidding, walk the way we walk, dress the way we dress, talk the way we talk, and then we may give you our approval. And as you have walked a few miles to approach yourselves to them, they have walked on and said, well, now that is not enough. You must do this. You must do that. You must even commit crimes for us. You must steal and lie for us. All of this you must do that you might have our approbation. The devil in the person of those who move about the earth as the proud, as the proud and the established ones who hold the moneyed interests of the planet and control the little people, blessed ones, they come along and they are determined to have you. They make the same promises that Satan promised to the Lord Christ. All these things I will give you if you will fall down and worship me. Why, they promise you the whole world they cannot deliver. Blessed hearts, it is well to be cured of the disease of having the desire to be thought well of by the wrong crowd. Now then, come in to those millions upon millions of saints robed in white who gather round the throne of God, the throne of Sanat Kumara, even the great white throne, beloved ones. And know if you so desire to know who are your reinforcements, who are the real people that you ought to want to please, then make the invocation as a part of your nightly journeying that you all be taken together to that high point of the throne of God, and you might know who is your crowd, who are the multitudes of light bearers on earth and in heaven who are one body. Blessed ones, get on the right side of the sun, get on the right side of God, get on the right side of yourself, 
and waste no further time in being impressed by or trying to impress those who are of another world, who are of another power, a stolen power ill-gotten. Walk in the way of the Buddha and let your mind be the mind of God. Rejoice in the accomplishments of the light bearers. Minister unto them, minister unto your soul. Set the agenda for your posterity. Prepare the children, plan the community, build the structures, establish the depths of your soul in the depths of ascension's flame and walk in that living fire all the days of your life and be willing to pay the price of the scorn of the watchers and the lesser devils and all who are not facing the Son of God. Walk in ascension's flame, beloved. That is my counsel to you. Walk in the flame of everlasting life. Be healed through the Son of God. Please him. Please him with all your heart and all your striving and all of your life. I set you free today from your ego. Now toss all of your egos into my hands. My hands cupped here. My hands are big enough to hold them all. For you see, minus the water, there is very little left. <laughs> now I shall toss them unto God. Now there is a hush, beloved ones, for there is a vacancy as a slip of a parting in the secret chamber of the heart, and the divine ego enters. The divine ego enters, beloved. Stay close to that one. Stay close to that presence, that identity, of your mighty I am. Know the divine ego. It need not strut. It need not prance. It need not make any showing of itself. It is the Tao. Thus it comes. And you who are its embodiment have no need to proclaim it. Go your way in peace. Go your way in the peace whereby the torment of all of the loud sounds, of all of the loud cackling, cackling geese of the egos of the world are silenced as you enter the silence of the flame of your divine ego. Having so said, having so done, I say to you, go out now in the calmness of the peace commanding presence. Be not moved this way or that. Seize the torch of your mission. Proclaim it to your heart. Proclaim it to the world when you are fully prepared and ready to give what you have to a world that has been waiting for your sun to rise, my beloved, for eons. I am your father. I bow to the light within you.
Let us have our sealing and benediction from the heart of the Elohim. O seven mighty Elohim of God, release through us all in this hour, through the seven planes of being and the mighty tree of life, the sealing of the light energy and consciousness of this entire conference in the heart of the great central sun, in the heart of Lord Maitreya, in the heart of the mystery school and the western Shambhala, in the heart of the retreat of the Divine Mother and in the heart of our mighty I Am Presence. Let every erg of energy bestowed upon us and invoked by us be sealed and protected by God and his angels to be used for the multiplication of the God consciousness, the Christ consciousness, and the presence of the Holy Spirit in all people of light upon earth. Oh, turn things around, Elohim. Turn things around and let this earth come into her true spiritual orbit. The paths are opened, O oh God, that all the light bearers of the earth make their way to the heart of the inner retreat next year and again and again and at night while their bodies sleep. We seal them all, O oh God, in thy name. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, and the Divine Mother, Lord Sanat Kumara Gautama Buddha, Lord Maitreya, Jesus Christ, and our beloved Padma Sambhava. In the name, the inner name pronounced by the angel of the Lord over each one, the inner name known only by God, we seal this conference in the heart of Elohim, and we are grateful, grateful to thee, O God, eternally and forever for these dispensations of the ascended masters and thy teachings. Amen.